two days, Brittany has done its best to dampen the spirit of the Tour de France, but the riders, as always, showed their total commitment to the finest of sporting conflict. And for two riders, the rain brought only tears of joy. Italian Tour first-timer Fabio Baldato won yesterday in Lannion. He powered away from Langelabert and is now a serious contender for the green jersey competition. But for the moment, the leader's yellow jersey stays with Jackie Durand. The ex-champion of France showed he could defend as well as win. For these two, the rain has been a welcome happening. Durand is the leader of the race now by two seconds from the Frenchman Lange Brochard and Thierry Laurent. Gone from the leaderboard is France's Francis Moreau, who went the wrong side of the barriers yesterday and failed to catch up. He lost 24 seconds. And this morning, all of the water is thankfully underfoot. Well, we're not going to need factor 25 just yet, but at least the sun is doing its best to shine here at Peroskirek on the Brittany coastline. Well, yesterday, Jackie Dorn showed us just what a good bike rider he really is. But he's put a lot of pressure now on his Castor Armour team. In fact, pressure that they never really anticipated. But they are well equipped to handle it, Paul Sherwin tells us. The Castorama team have one of the best managers in the business to guide them, Cyril Guimard, the man who helped Bernard Hinault, Greg Lemont and Laurent Fignon to victories in the Tour de France. Holding the leader's yellow jersey is important for a team, but with the team time trial tomorrow, it's also necessary not to use up too much energy. Yesterday, Cyril Guimard played his cards correctly. In the middle of the race, when the lone escaper, Eric Decker, had a lead of two minutes, he ordered the team to chase. The defence of the yellow jersey beginning at this point. During this period, the team were expending a lot of energy. When Decker's lead dropped to one minute, Guimard made the tactical decision to have the team stop chasing, knowing that the teams of the sprinters would take over. And they did. The combined power of the Mercatone Uno team and the Lotto squad brought Decker back into the fold. The defense of the yellow jersey had been successful, without expending too much energy. And it's another day in the hot seat for the Castorama because today it's over 235 kilometers from Peros Guillac to Vitre. The race leaves the Côte d'Amour and enters the department of the Ile et Vilaine. Three sprints and a small climb en route, and the race never goes above 700 feet over sea level. And the more pleasant day as well as the 188 riders are moving away from the attractive Breton town of fine beaches and jagged coastline. For Jackie Duron, though, the fairy tale will continue. Everyone wondering if today will be the final chapter. At the first sprint, after 16 kilometers, Jamaluddin Abdu Japarov snatches the six second time bonus, followed over by the top sprinters of Mario Cipollini and Laurent Jalabert. And that sprint for third place by Jalabert has claimed him back two seconds. He's now within five seconds of Duron's jersey. But for the French GAN team, their nightmare Tour de France continued. After losing Chris Bourbon on Saturday, the French champion, Eddie Seigneur, the winner of the final stage into Paris a year ago, has given up the race. Apparently, he is very ill. Much better weather conditions today. It's expected to be dry with just a slight risk of rain later in the afternoon. Temperatures won't exceed 18 degrees Celsius, but with a strong westerly wind, it should help the riders towards the finish in Vitre. And the same men, Legrand, the second sprint. This narrow victory in favor of Laurent Jalabert in the pink has given him a six second time bonus. He is now the overall leader of the Tour de France on the road by a single second. And with 48 kilometers to go on the stage, Jackie Duron is in even more trouble. Well, the arm is up of Jackie Duron, the yellow jersey of the Tour de France. And when you start to lose your grip on the race, then things always seem to start to go wrong as well. He has a flat front tyre. And he was just on the attack at the time it happened. He's come back into the field. In fact, all of his team are now waving at the service because the fast change will be absolutely crucial here. He's still very much in with a chance of taking uh, the time back in the race lead because there's still a time bonus sprint to come and, of course, the time bonus at the finish. I'm a little bit surprised, Paul, that his own teammates haven't stopped and given him a bike there. Well, the race isn't going at full bore at the moment. There's a bit of disorganisation as he's running up the road. In fact, one of his teammates may have stopped, but there's Patrice Charlet, a nordeast from the north of France, his mechanic, getting the front wheel in there. A little bit of a panic for Jackie Duray. Teammates were waiting for him. They didn't give him a quick change, but he's up and back on his bike again, and he'll soon be back in the main field. But a bit of panic, I think. 
And now the whole field are actually in pursuit of two breakaways. Eric van der Orden of the Brasilia team from Italy and Franz Massen from the Nobel team, who's a Dutchman. And they're 28 kilometres from the finish. Jackie Duron has safely got back into the field, but it was a tough ride and his teammates had to wait and take him back into the safety of the big peloton. But all of the work now being done, not by the Castor Armour, of course, but by the men who now have Laurent Jalabert on the team, the Onsay team, because now they want those two leaders back and give Jalabert another shot, Paul, at a time bonus sprint. They do, there'll be a six second time bonus sprint and just a, a few kilometres up the road, but there's still 20 seconds on the finish line, 20 seconds for the first man, 12 for the second and 8 seconds for the third. But the Onse have decided that Laurent Jalabert is definitely their man, which is why you can see all of those pink jerseys of the Onse squad at the front. Number 61 in the middle of them is Laurent Jalabert. These two men at the front here are Eric van der Raden in the blue jersey, Franz Massen just behind him in the red, white and black jersey of Novell. They're trying to upset the apple cart. Well, they both won stages before. In fact, Van der Rohden has won five stages over his career in the Tour de France and the green jersey, which he won in 1986. While Franz Massen won the, a stage in 1990, Futura Scope, and has been riding the Tour de France since 1988. They've dangled out front. The maximum they've had, in fact, was uh, just over one minute. And now it's down to inside 30 seconds, round about 20 seconds, we think. Overall, Masson is a minute and 21 seconds behind the leader, and Van der Aarde a minute and 51 seconds. So there's no real chance of them taking yellow, but the stage win is what they're trying to pick up. And there's the gap from our helicopter cameras and the boys in pink chasing it down slowly but surely. I'm not sure they'll gain contact, though, before that sprint for six seconds uh, comes up. And uh, I'm sure everybody at home would like to know the latest on Chris Bourbon, who crashed out of the Tour de France with broken bones in the prologue time. So, well, Chris, at this very moment, is recovering from an operation on his ankle, which has been pinned during a 90-minute operation, which was a little bit more complicated than expected. Uh, but uh, the surgeons say it will heal fine. And, Chris, you have all our best wishes here at Channel 4. And uh, we look forward to you defending with great success your world championships when you go to Colombia in October. But I'm afraid it's not good news for your team because earlier we showed you pictures of the retirement of the other strong man in Chris's GAN team and that's Eddie Seigneur, the champion of France. So they've lost two of their nine men and this race has barely started. As we come under the banner with 20 kilometers to go, it must be just around this corner when these two riders will see the banner for the hotspot sprint. Well, it wouldn't surprise me, in fact, if these two don't even sprint for the banner in 500 metres time, because although there is a prize uh, for the first two riders, it's not this prize they're hunting. Franz Massen has the lead at the moment, then Eric van der Aarden. Van der Aarden, in his days, was a great sprinter as well as a great time trial rider. But he's lost a little bit of that, I suppose you do when you get a little bit older. Yeah, that's one of the first things to go on the... The thing that a rider like uh, Eric van der Aarden has also probably lost is his ability to climb, but he has really started to ride well in the last couple of years, especially when to it. And this is, in fact, a good move by Jackie Durand. He's tried to surprise Laurent Jalabert because he could get the two seconds back, but straight away there's an Onse rider on him. And the Onse rider must beat him because the third place gets two seconds, and that's Jalabert who's jumped him straight away. Well, Jalabert knows the men to mark. He followed the yellow jersey and goes by with the greatest of ease while in fact it's Franz Massen who takes the first place from Eric van der Aarden. This is going to put Jalabar three seconds ahead in the Tour de France because he is taking the third place bonus of two seconds at the sprint. He's doing just enough to make sure that Jackie Durand does not creep up on him. That's the white line, two seconds in the bag, so Jean Laurent Jalabert now leads the Tour de France by three seconds with the finish still to come. What a great tactic. So, the race is coming slowly together. I'm sure they'll all be together in the next few kilometres, and then we'll be down for the big finish. We'll take a break. After the break, an update on last year's terrible Stage 1 crash, and a look at the worst ever tour accident, which happened in the Parc des Princes Velodrome, on the last day of the 1958 race. That's in a couple of minutes. Tra dramatic still from 1958 captures the moment when a stadium employee stepped out onto the track of the Parc des Princes Velodrome, right into the path of French rider André Darigard. 
The park keeper, who ironically had been trying to clear photographers off the track, died from his injuries. Darigard recovered and returned to racing. You know, the first thing I thought of when I saw that photograph was the terrible crash on stage one in Armantier last year when a policeman stepped out in front of the final bunch sprint. Thankfully, no one died in that accident, but Wilfred Nellison and Lauren Jalambert were seriously hurt. Jalambert in particular, though, has made an amazing recovery. As they come up towards the line, Nellison is taking... Oh, and they've gone! They've gone the one after the other. They've hit in the, the time it took a gendarme to step out into the road to take a picture, the Tour de France went from the only thing on Lauren Jalambert's mind to the last thing. I've always had fear for my health, in all. C'est vrai qu'à ce moment-là, le, cy le cyclisme, ça comptait plus, quoi. Jalabert suffered multiple injuries, including a broken jaw. But not only has he returned to racing, he's actually a better rider than he was before the accident. This season, he dominated the early spring classics like no one in history, winning the unprecedented triple of Paris-Nice, Milan-San Remo and the Criterium International. Everyone can see the difference, except apparently the man himself. <laughs> La personne, je crois qu'il n'y en a pas beaucoup. Euh, la grosse différence, elle est dans les résultats, quoi. Je crois. But actually, it's more than just the results. Jalabert was a pure sprinter before the accident. Now he has all-round power. Sooner or later, though, he knows he's going to have to test his nerve in a close sprint finish. Pour l'instant, euh, j'ai pas fait beaucoup, beaucoup de sprints, mais moi, les quelques uns que j'ai pu faire, il euh, n'y a pas eu de peur. Qu'on va voir, j'apprends surtout la première étape du Tour. <laughs> Happily, Laurent survived stage one intact this year, and the weight of home expectation is now on him to recapture the green jersey he won in 1992. But the man himself is more interested, at least initially, in stage wins. I think it's an objective that I can achieve, and it's not easy to achieve. So, first of all, I'm going to hold on to that. The fight for the white jersey, it depends a little bit on the second part of the Tour. We'll see already after the mountain who is going to be dangerous for the white jersey. The other rider heard in that stage one crash, Wilfred Nellison, has also made a full recovery, by the way, and he's back on this year's tour. Although these days the Belgian champion is putting his faith in a higher power than the race organisation. When we caught up with him at the start of this morning stage, he was sporting a St. Christopher on his top tube. We also phoned the police in Armentier, and they say the officer involved is also back on duty, although hopefully not traffic duty. Back to the racing. And there are the two leaders down there. They've just been brought back into the fray. The far right in the white is, in fact, Franz Massen. Van der Aan has done the classic move as they've come up to them. He's gone again in the hope that this time they'll let him go. But I'm not too sure they're thinking like that. Definitely not. Many of the sprinters teams have come to the front there. I saw the Lotto squad sending Herman Fries on just a few moments ago there to try and bring it all back together for Wilfred Nelson. But an excellent move by Eric van der Aan trying to get clear one last time but it won't be very long I don't think before he gets reeled into the pack and there's a lot of crashes at the back another man going down here from the Festina squad that looked very much to me in fact as if that was uh, Pascal Hervé one of the revelations on the Festina squad last year and that's Bruno Roussel pushing him back into the race well that's a horrible sight if you look over your shoulder Eric because the cavalry is right behind and he's given up and here they come and what a charge it's going to be down to the finish line down in here in Vitre because there are so many of the top sprinters in this main pack from all over the world would like to take the stage victory. It's the Lotto team at the front in the red and black doing the work there for the man from Belgium, Wilfred Nelson. In second place, in fact, is the Italian champion Gianni Bugno, who's a teammate of Fabio Baldata, the man who took the stage victory yesterday. And in the pink jerseys of Telecom will be Eric Zabel. TVM now having a little dig at the front. A team which Robert Miller used to ride for. He chose to change teams uh, this year and sadly he is not in the Tour de France when his new team, Le Groupement, a French team, pulled out of the whole sport just four days before this race started. And as a result, Robert Miller, who had great form, the new British champion, uh, didn't get his chance to ride in his 12th Tour de France. Unlike Sean Yates, of course, who is in this race and riding in his 12th Tour de France and equaling the record uh, set by uh, the Yorkshireman Barry Hoban. This is Fratini from the Gaywiz team. He, in fact, recently won the Grand Prix of Frankfurt, which was a surprise to win for him. But the Gaywiz team are such a strong team, but it's uh, the cohesion of all the riders that I think gives them their success. 10 kilometer banner flying overhead, and Fratini is trying to uh, 
bring the game this team back into the action. They were the team of the early season last year, but they haven't done quite so well this year. As Paul just said, uh, Fratini was the surprise winner of the World Cup event, the Grand Prix Frankfurt in Germany. But apart from that, they haven't featured like they have in previous early season races. Another man there from TVM looking for a gap. That was Jesper Skibby, I think, trying to slip clear. A man who always looks for the gap at the end of a race like this. He's not a superb sprinter, but he won a, a brilliant stage and a, a, a hilltop finish a couple of years ago, which was, took everybody by surprise, and he just managed to hold off. And whenever you get to the end of a race like this, Skibby's looking for a break. And this is Yanni Bugno, who's paying uh, a lot of attention to the front of the race today. On the back uh, there, the lamprey colours, that's the blue and the mauve, is Jan Zverada, who was my tip for the victory yesterday, but he fell off as he approached the finish and didn't get his shot at the gold medal. Well, everybody has a, a chance today, but at the moment it looks very much as if the Onse have moved over to the left of the road to give a little bit of shelter to the rest of the riders in here, and everybody started to come back together. The ball figure just going off this picture there was Marco Pantani, a little bit further back, another balding figure, which seems to be the message of the day these days of Armand de las Cuevas. And the attack again from Frattini, he's just been brought back once and he's gone again. Well, Gay Wiss are deciding they're not going to fall into the sprinter's hand, but the sprinter chases. Just look at the strength of Laurent Jalabert. He knows he's in yellow. He's launched another attack to mark this attack by Frattini. Jalabert's had a marvellous, marvellous season and taken away completely at the tragedy of one year ago. This year he has won 14 races, and that despite the fact that midway through the season he decided to take a layoff of five weeks so he wouldn't become stale. He came back just as good as he was when he left. Tremendous achievement by Laurent Jalabert. Well, the kilometres tumbling down. This is now the town of Vitre. And the riders go into the town, traverse the town, and then uh, pick their way out to the long, long finishing straight, which is almost two kilometres of perfectly straight road. Normally, a real playground for the sprinters. But Jean Laurent Jalabert, who is Bernard Eno, the five times winner of the Tour de France, has said that Laurent Jalabert uh, shouldn't imagine himself to be a sprinter. He should look at himself as to be a real classic rider who could win the Tour de France. And, you know, Jalabert, well, if he finds himself in yellow, as he seems now certain to do tonight, he has got to respect the reputation of Bernard Eno and consider whether he can, in fact, go for the victory in the Tour de France and not just for the green points jersey. But we'll know more about that as the weeks unfold. Into the town of Vitre, another one of these beautiful little French towns. I think that's Andrea Taffy trying to go through there at the moment. At the back, there are a lot of riders scrambling to try and get back into contention. One man who's missed this sprint, this split, is the sprinter Wilfred Nelson. And I think it may well be too late for him to get back into contention for the sprint. At the front, it's the MAPE GB team. Andrea Taffy trying to go clear at the moment. Three kilometres to go, and it's a very tough climb, this. And Taffy, the teammate of uh, Tony Rominger. He'll be forced into action to defend for Roming, and I'm sure later on in this tour, but right now he's got freedom to go alone. He has had an absolutely brilliant uh, season, Andrea Taffy, in the workhorse position for Rominger. But now he's got his chance, but the counter move is coming, and very quickly indeed, they're swept by him. And this is a Lamprey rider who's having an attack, and I'm wondering, in fact, if Maurizio Fondriest is trying to show his colours at the front. Two kilometres from the finish. One of the TVM riders slipped in behind there and looking very much to me as if, again, that was Jesper Skibby, the man who always looks for these moves at the end of a race. It's one and a half kilometres to go now. This is Maurizio Fondriest on the front, putting the pressure on, shadowed by the TVM rider, but still not very far behind him. The whole of that group now being led by the Onse team. They realise Laurent Jalabert is the man who could walk away with yellow tonight, but they'd love him to get the stage victory as well. So Fondrias has gone clear, I'm not too sure who that TVM rider is, he's a big rider, it could be Henry Fredant who's gone with him. But Fondrias, who was told that if he didn't take part as part of the Lamprey team and his team wouldn't make the Tour de France, he thought that was the nearest you could come to blackmail, decided he had to ride the Tour. He's in fact been joined by Jesper Skibby here. That's the jester of the TVM team, but the man who is a brilliant rider as well when he's not clowning around with everybody, and now he's showing us his other side and the great talent he is too. Yes, Skibby has gone to the front. Well, I spoke to the Danish television earlier today and I said, well, your riders haven't won much so far. They said, don't worry, we're going to win plenty of stages. Well, now Skibby has made the move and they're inside a kilometre and a half from the line with Fondrias. This is going to foil the sprinters, I think. 
They may well have just moved at the right time. They're working very well together. There's no animosity. They realize that they can't look at each other and wait and try and cheat one out of the other. They're giving everything they've got, but right behind, the main field is boring down upon them. I think they've got about 50 meters lead at the moment. That may well just be enough because just at the top there, you can see there is the Flamme Rouge, the red kite. They've got one kilometer to go, so it may well be that they've gone just a little bit too early because this is a long, hard climb. And in fact, this looks like Andre Schmiel, the lotto rider who's come back in there. Schmiel, the lotto boys, we saw the lotto team warming up the chase and they got nothing out of it yesterday, but now Schmiel has come. And this time, Andre Schmiel has gone through. He led the World Cup last year. He was a brilliant winner last year at Paris-Roubaix. And he's just taken them on the fly. He's going into the last seven or 800 meters now. And the reaction coming from Anse for Jalabert because the first three riders will receive bonuses of 2012 and eight. And Jalabert is trying to conserve his new lead in the Tour de France. Schmiel is trying just to conserve a few yards in the Tour de France as he comes up on the right of our picture. And the sprint with Fedegati is right behind him now. Martinello is coming through, Cipollini is in there as well and so is Abdul Jabrov, they've got him on the line, they've got him on the line, Martinelli Cipollini, Abdul Jabrov, that's the order comes to the line, Fedegato also, but Cipollini is coming clear now and Cipollini is going to get it, Fedegato is taking him on board now as comes the green jersey too of Baldato, now Abdul Jabrov Cipollini gets it, Cipollini gets it on the line and right alongside him there was in fact Giovanni Lombardi was the teammate uh, who came in on his side and Abdul Jabrov was there as well and Baldato just behind them all and now the sprint of the gap and the yellow jersey Jackie Giron he's out of the lead for sure now brings home the rest and here we are again and just look at this now it was in fact on the right it was Giovanni Lombardi the new Italian professional coming up taking on a Cipollini they often dice together back home in Italy then came the white figure of Jamaldin Abdu Jabrov on the far right is Lawrence Jalabert and in the green is Fabio Baldato but today it's Mario Cipollini so the self-acclaimed fastest man in the world shows a clean pair of wheels to some of the best sprinters Mario Cipollini winning ahead of Giovanni Lombardi, Jamaluddin Abdu Japarov and the winner yesterday, Fabio Baldato. So Cipollini on the podium for only the second time in his career in a Tour de France, but you know he almost didn't win when Jesper Skibby escaped near the end. Even the Dane was shocked at the speed the sprinters picked him up. Yeah, I was a little bit surprised, you know, but, well, I thought it was going a little bit more uh, flat here, you know, but it was going a little bit uphill. But, well, it's a way of life is cycling, eh? Try again, try again after tomorrow. Yeah, we try again. Maybe not after tomorrow, but someday, for sure. Overall, there has been a change, and Laurent Jalabert is now the new leader of the Tour de France, a few seconds in front of the other Frenchman, Laurent Brochard. Sean Yates and Max Chiandri, the two British riders in the race, well, they finished safely in the main field today. They'll have their part to play tomorrow in their respective teams in the team time trial. But what a happy man Laurent Jalabert is. A year to the day when he crashed and was taken away from the race seriously injured. He now pulls on the yellow jersey as leader of the Tour de France. Well, while the celebrations go on, let's spare a thought today for the Gant team. They've now lost their best two riders. First, Chris Borman going out, and today their French champion, Eddie Seigneur. But the speed merchants, well, they rode exceptionally well today. And you know they're now calling Mario Cipollini the Lion King because of those flowing locks. Tomorrow it's the team time trial over 67 kilometers. The ride is going from Mayenne to Alençon. Surely the pack will reshuffle again. Until tomorrow night, goodbye.